Hi, this is Kenny Albert. You're listening to the Broadway Hat Podcast with your host, Kyle Hall, the number one podcast for all things Rangers hockey. Welcome back to the Broadway Hat Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hall. And last night, a rough loss at the Garden for the New York Rangers, who put up 51 shots on that. But, man, what a performance from Hellebuck there in the, in the Winnipeg Jets. A former Vezina Trophy winner showed why he's one of the best goalies in the league, making 50 saves, and the Rangers just could not put one by Well, they put one by him, but, I mean, guy made some incredible saves. I think he robbed Chris Kreider three or four times. Trocek, I mean, he had the post maybe two or three times, too. Seen, you know, the guy leads the league in post hit. Uh, but just a rough loss. I think it's the second time they've lost to Winnipeg now. Four to one in the, this season. Igor led a couple soft ones, but no matter what, I mean, Hell Bucks just outplayed everyone tonight. Was the best player on the ice, and uh, man, he yeah, he was good. And the, he breaks the Rangers' uh, ten game point streak, and uh, the Rangers lost their seven game win streak uh, against Calgary in their last game. So the Rangers after winning seven in a row now on a little two game mini losing streak, uh, but hey, they've been red hot lately. They've been great. The Western Canada swing after the, the big win in Carolina. You go and get a nice win out in Vancouver. And then just an absolutely incredible comeback from uh, comeback from behind win. 4-1 to one down the first period. The comeback all the way. Win 5-4 to four in OT in a shootout. Incredible comeback there for the Rangers. It was unreal. Unreal. Uh, I love the Rangers swear that night. Late night, everyone's staying up yelling about the win. It was crazy. It was awesome. And then you go to Calgary, you fall behind 2 0, you battle back there. 2 0 in the first minute. Battle back, get the game to OT, you get the point there. And then you come home, unfortunately, and Hellbuck plays a great game. But hey, listen, New York Rangers are for real, and they made another, another move to make sure that the league knew that this team is here. And Chris Jury went out. Listen to all New York Ranger fans who have been yelling for it since the offseason that they wanted him back. He goes back and reacquires Tyler Mott. From the Ottawa Senators, he sends back Julian Gauthier in a seventh, conditional seventh-round pick. Rangers fans want to mop back. Didn't really work out with the cap in the summer, but they make the move now. They make get him back, which is great. I think it's a great move for the Rangers. It really helps that fourth line, which has been struggling. But, and listen, a lot of people give Julian Gauthier a lot of crap. Personally, I like the guy. Um, you know, I always thought that he could deliver more than – some Ranger fans did. I thought maybe he needed a little more of a chance with more of a scoring line than a fourth line. But I want to wish him all the luck there in Ottawa, and hopefully he gets some more playing time there on a team, a younger team possibly, uh, where he can maybe move up in the lineup or kind of figure out his game there. But uh, right now, Tyler Mott helps his team win a championship more than Julian Gauthier. Personally, that's what I think. So I think it's a great move for the Rangers from what they gave up. Last year they gave up a fourth-round pick for him to Vancouver. This year, it's Julian Gauthier, who I think has a little bit more value than the fourth-round pick. So, you know, they gave up a little bit more this year than they did last year. But all in all, great move for Chris Drury, who's been knocking out of the park. Tarasenko has been very good for the Rangers so far. I like the Mikola guy. He's been Mikola, whatever how you pronounce his name. I think he's been good back there in defense. I think he's filled in nicely. After that rough first game, I think he's really settled down. And, uh, you know, I think Chris Drury, and then <clears throat> there's another move to make here. There's one more move to make. If it is it Patrick Kane, is it you know another fourth line guy? Is it Tanner Janot, who personally I want to get from Nashville, who right now he's either going to sign an extension or get traded, and the Rangers I think are just kind of holding to see what happens there. Uh, but they they're going to have a little bit of cap space. I know Puckpedia came out and kind of gave like how the Rangers can still get Patrick Kane to kind of keep that dream alive for some Ranger fans and and for Patrick Kane who clearly has come out and said basically he wanted to go to the Rangers. So there is still an avenue possibly there for him to come to New York, which would be a ridiculous top six. And then Jimmy VC drop down to your fourth line and be a dominant fourth line. Or Tanner Janot comes in, who I think can make the fourth line fantastic. Probably be the best fourth line in hockey. And then you leave um, Jimmy VC up there on the top six where he's played well. He's been fine up there. He gives a little bit of defensive help up there, too, as well, which Gerard Glott has said he likes that in the top six, a little bit of defensive help. All in all, this team is for real. I am so excited about this team. It's the best, most complete lineup they've had since 2015, where if I will go to my grave thinking if 
Zuccarello does not get hurt, knocked out of those playoffs, they win the Stanley Cup. I will always believe that. I will always believe that they win the Cup that year if he doesn't go out hurt. But this team, top to bottom, is built so well. And it's, I mean, Ranger fans, you need to be ecstatic. This is the this team. It looks so good right now. I know it was a rough loss Monday night at the Garden, but still, I saw on the um I forget what website it is, but they have with the the Zerville win meter, and the Rangers win that game seventy three percent of the time. They just ran to a hot goalie, and this team is great. And right now, that comeback win in Edmonton, the comeback from behind in Calgary to get the point there and get the overtime. That team last year that had that no quit in New York, obviously it was a marketing ploy, but. It really was. The team had no quit in New York. They're showing that again this year. They're showing it again now. Did they? You didn't see that until that Jacob Truba helmet tossing in December when they turned the whole season around. Who would have known that whole blow up would have turned this whole team around? But since then, this team has had that no quit attitude again. They're st- they never believe they're out of a game. As a fan, even when they lose, they fall behind tonight. It was a two nothing? I'm like in the first period. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting there last night thinking. Okay, to get the next one, they'll be back. You know, they can come back in this game. Some fan, I mean, there's years that the Rangers fall behind 2 0, the game's over. There's no, they're not winning the game. But there's a lot of belief in this team, there's a lot of belief in this fan base, and I love it. I, I think the Ranger fans should be geared up for a nice run. Right now, they're in a collision course with the New, New Jersey Devils for a first round Battle of the Hudson, Battle Royale, as the Devils sit just four points ahead of them in the standings. Rangers trail Carolina by was it seven points now I believe after uh, tonight yeah seven points after tonight's game so I mean I don't think they're catching Carolina I don't think New Jersey's catching Carolina I think the Rangers and Devils are going to be the first round matchup and boy would I love to see them jump the Devils to get home ice even though the Rangers fans pack out Prudential Center it's nice to have home ice in that first round we saw last year at Pittsburgh in that game seven. How it was nice to play on home ice there. So hopefully the Rangers can get there, catch New Jersey, get home ice because that series is going to be crazy. It's going to be great for the Tri-State area. It's going to be great for the rivalry. I That's going to be a very cool series. First time in a very long time the Rangers and Devils have played a big series like that. And then, I mean, the Metro is just, you know, another big Metro story as uh, Barzal is now out for the Islanders indefinitely. So who knows what goes on there. They just make the big move. The Bing and Horvat and the Devils and the Islanders have been hot. They're six two and two in the last ten games, and uh, you know then they're sitting in that fourth playoff in the fourth seat in the playoff, and who knows how long Barzell's going to how long they can weather that storm. So we'll see. We'll see if Bars if the, how big you know the Islanders can get through that. Uh, you know, right below them is Washington. There's a point back. Ovechkin's been out with his father's death. He's now back stateside, I believe, to play this week. So um, they'll get another boost, kicking you know a little boost from Ovechkin being back. And then the Penguins are right behind them. They got Tristan Jari come back now. He made his season. He made his uh, came back to the lineup on Monday night too against the Isles. So teams are getting reinforcements. The Rangers are making moves. You know, it's gonna come down to I think the Devils are gonna get Timo Meyer. He seems to be ticketed there. Carolina's definitely gonna get some kind of an upgrade from somewhere. They've been kind of uh, apparently tied to Patrick Kane as well. So we'll see. It seems like this division, obviously Metro, has been the best division in hockey all season long. These teams are. Really built well. I mean, they're really deep teams up and down this entire uh, division. So it's going to be a dogfight to get out of it. Whoever plays in that conference finals that like the Rangers did last year is going to have, have to go through a war to get there. And, uh, you know, as we saw, the Rangers really tire them out for the Tampa series. But there's a lot of belief in this Rangers team. you got to be so excited for how they're going. And uh, this week, we got a great guest joining us, Brendan Kotick, who is the head coach of the South Carolina Stingrays, who are the East Coast affiliate of the Washington Capitals. He also spent time in the Rangers organization as well out of college. Uh, just an insane story of how he made it to pro hockey. He uh, played, you know, didn't make his, didn't get invited to try out or didn't make his uh, WHL team, his hometown team. Went the route of the uh, SJHL and then also the Manitoba Junior Hockey League. Worked on his game there. Didn't go D1 college, went D3 initially, worked his butt off D3, walked on D1 at Minnesota Duluth, worked his way there. I believe he earned a scholarship while he was there and, uh, you know, earned playing time. From there, earned a contract as an undrafted free agent with the Rangers. Just an incredible story. Absolutely incredible story about his journey 
through hockey and now as a coach. And, uh, yeah, just it was great to sit down and talk to him. Uh, but before we send to an interview with Brennan, I do want to tell you about our sponsors over at InTheClutch.com. Listen, hockey season's almost in the playoffs. MLB's getting started. NBA's heading towards the playoffs. And Knicks are going to be in the playoffs, it looks like, this year, which is great. Go on InTheClutch.com. Use our code BROADWAY. Save 10% off today. And then also go check out all of our Ranger merch as well. Go check out our It's Not a, it's not a Garden, It's a Jungle Party. Uh, it's a Jungle T-shirt there, a la Chris Kreider last year in the playoffs. Go get that ready for this year's playoffs. Go get your Yankee gear. Go get your Met gear. Get your Knicks stuff. Gear up for the playoffs for them. But when you do so, make sure you use the code BROADWAY only at InTheClutch.com. Go get shopping today and make sure you use our code BROADWAY to save 10% off today. All right, we're now joined by a very special guest. He played in the Rangers organization, and he is now the head coach of the South Carolina Stingrays, the ECHL uh, affiliate of the Washington Capitals. Brennan Kotick, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad uh, we were able to make something happen here. Yeah, and uh, congratulations. You were just the uh, head coach of the Eastern Conference uh, All Star or the Eastern Conference team, the All Star game there. Uh, so it had to be a pretty cool experience. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, definitely a great honor for our organization. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, they always say uh, you get too much credit when you're winning and you get too much blame when you're losing. So uh, obviously our guys have won a lot of hockey games for, for us and they're, they were the reason that I got there, but definitely a cool honor for sure. Did you have an itch to get out there for the skills comps at all to kind of test them out a little bit? Yeah. I mean, the only thing would have been hard to shot. I mean, you wouldn't want to see me skate around trying to get fast <laughs> skater. So <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think you're breaking these days on a harder shot? I don't know what I'd be. I think I still got a pretty good shot. So I probably high eighties, low low nineties, probably. All right. Anywhere near triple digits in the playing days or no? Uh could have been close, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I never really did it when I was playing. So I watched the obviously the NHL just had their skills comp and every year, you know, they hit they add stupid stuff to it every year, but uh, the hardest shot, obviously, that's the one that everyone wants. It's like the slam dunk contest. You know, that's what everyone wants to pay sure. attention to. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, these guys just ring it up 100, 102, 103. It's crazy. Yeah. And and the crazier thing is now guys are like willing to block those shots and uh, not even think <laughs> twice. So I was going to say, as a, as a former defenseman, I'm sure you've uh, gotten the way of a few uh, yeah. nice ones to the point. Sure did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, growing up in Saskatchewan, so in uh, actually Regina, uh, who was your favorite team growing up? I've always asked this question. I never really had one. Like my dad and I would watch Hockey Night in Canada, and a lot of it would be Leafs and Canadians. And don't really, neither of those teams really like intrigued me. I just kind of liked hockey. And my favorite team, believe it or not, is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, I didn't have one until um, they came into the league. And for whatever reason, I was really high on Rick Nash. Like I changed my midget AAA number to Rick Nash. And actually, cool story at at camp. I actually he introduced himself to me, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. So, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not didn't have a favorite team growing up. Oh, yeah, because you guys like right in the middle of what is it, Winnipeg and Calgary, right? That's the two major cities between you. Yeah, Winnipeg's five, and Calgary is about eight. Yeah, so not not the easiest to get to a game either way. No. <laughs> so is there a game like in that market like is there a team that's always on that market or always just like you get the hockey night in canada that's it yeah it was pretty much just hockey night in canada yeah. now they got bedard can you know bedard tv now there every night you know kind of i know I'm, I'm a little <laughs> upset i won't be able to actually see him it's kind of cool what he's doing obviously saw, uh so respect. who did he sell at the saddle dome the other night like he was selling yeah. out like major major venues Two two tickets, I think, were like thirty eight hundred Canadian or something, just insane. But he's supposed to be the real deal. That's uh, crazy. It's absolutely. I had um, uh, Rod Peterson on the show, who does a big show there, and he's yeah. like, he's like, he told me last year, or maybe it was the year before that, he's like, yeah, this is a kid coming along, as a sixteen year old, he's a freak, like he's so good. I'm like, oh, it's all man. cool. I yeah. heard the name then, and like all of a sudden, like it's grown since then. Now it's like. Kids, I mean, Ranger fans had Alexis Lafreniere when he was kind of like the next, like, you know, coming. Yeah. And this kid seems like he's got much more height than he had coming out. Yeah, for sure. But he's small, though, right? He's like 5'8". Like, he's not a, yeah, he's not very not a big, big guy. I, I always wonder how he's those guys will kind of do at the next level. But 
a lot of guys that I thought are too small have, have gone on to it's kind of like their mentality, right? Like they just prove people wrong that everybody says they're too small and they just find a way. So and I got to ask you about your junior career. Now I saw some pictures of you. I think it was the SJHL or maybe it was in Manitoba. You, you had some flow work in there. Yeah, and, I and did. You, are we bringing uh, that back anytime soon? <laughs> no, I, I wish it was because my hairline is kind of thinning and receding. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things where I just kind of grew it and I thought the hockey hair was the thing to do. And I didn't actually realize how long it truly had gotten, but like it was down probably to like here. I really didn't know it was that bad. And, um, but yeah, it was a little phase that I went through and I liked it, but, um, yeah, now anything that's like around my ears, I have to get a haircut. So kind of two, two different tales there. That's usually a big indication to me or like my wife will see like my hair stand up in the morning. So you gotta get a haircut. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Uh, like COVID was difficult. No haircut. I and I hate having like hair touch my ear and that. Like, I hate that. So COVID was that was a wake up call for me. Like, oh man, either we got to cut my own hair or we got to really drag this thing out for a little bit. Yeah. What'd you do? I dragged it out. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I didn't hair. trust myself or my wife with scissors around my head. So for sure. <laughs> uh, it's a thought your, your junior career. So you, you didn't play in the WHL. You went the college route. How did that all play out there? Yeah. So, I mean, growing up right in town uh, with a team, the WHL, like it was all, all I ever wanted to do was play for their Gina Pats. Uh, we actually billeted two guys. Uh, one was Jeff Feniak. He was a D-man when they had the Memorial Cup. And then another Britt Doherty, he was their fighter. Uh, so we billeted those guys. So it just kind of, I wanted to be WHL. So Nothing really happened. My 17-year-old year with the Regina Pack Canadians, I got listed by the Prince George Cougars, uh, the Western Hockey League, went out there for camp in the fall. And so they were getting ready to go to a USA tournament, and they were kind of calling everybody in, and camp was done. And they're like, hey, we're going to we're gonna send you back to Humboldt. Like, we're not 100% sure on you, and we don't want to risk your college eligibility. And at the time, I was kind of like, well, like what's college? Like what, what do you mean? Kind of. And, uh, so I went back to Humboldt, um, that year ended up breaking my collarbone mid mid season. And then I went back my 19 year old year, um, started out well. I went from D to forward, had four goals, I think in eight games to start the year, got traded to Dauphin, uh, played my first three, games at forward um didn't get any points and then there was an injury on d and the coach called me and he's like hey you just play d right i'm like yeah he's like okay well, we're gonna put you on d for the night i'm like okay i think i ended up having like a goal and two assists or something from the back end he called me in the next day he's like hey we're not we're not gonna move you back to forward you're gonna be a d man i'm like okay um and ended up doing really well um in that league and off in there so yeah you're the top defenseman and first team all-star so it, it was a pretty good switch for you yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it worked out. So, <laughs> uh, but then from there, I mean, obviously, like I just said, you you were one of the top defensemen, obviously, in that league. Uh, but you ended up going D three at first. So, what was that college process like that you ended up having to go D three? Yeah, so ended up taking. I was getting calls, uh, Division three mostly, um, and then I started to get like, not lower end schools, but like some uh, Atlantic hockey schools that were reaching out uh actually AIC was very interested I took my SATs all that and it sounded like they were going to give me a scholarship and then um found out I couldn't get through to the clearinghouse uh, my grades from I believe high school and like SAT scores weren't as high um so I couldn't go division one um and ended up at the end of the year I was really talking to Saint Scholastica the team that I ended up going to but Adrian uh Bulldogs were also another team that was really interested so they called me right after our season and I was just like I wasn't frustrated but I like kind of wanted putting a little stress on me so I just said yeah I'll, I'll commit I'll commit um so I committed to Adrian and then ended up going through the process and the RBC cup was in Humboldt. So Scholastica, the first team that ever talked to me, the first school 
was driving through and they're like, Hey, like, we just want to chat with you. Like nothing. And I was like, okay. And just like had another conversation with them and like, didn't know anything about Duluth. Um, but after the conversation I had called and obviously decommitted from Adrian, which I obviously don't like going against my word and apologize to the coach, um, a couple years later about going back on my word. Uh, but yeah, I went to Scholastica and, um, had a really good, good year there. Um, the thing I liked best was like, he didn't, I wasn't handed anything off the start. I came in as a freshman and had to earn my ice time and things worked out and happened to know, uh, I was working with the skating coach, uh, for St. Scholastica, but she was more, um, with the UMD Bulldogs at the time. So she had ended up, uh, just mentioning my name at, at UMD and one of the assistant coaches, Jason Herter, who's from Saskatchewan, uh, said he had saw me play before, but I wasn't, wasn't a good skater at all. And she's like, no, he's been working on it. Um, gotten a lot better. And so he came to one of our playoff games and ended up playing well again. And we had, I ended up giving him a call and just kind of seeing like what was going on um if there was an opportunity and they invited me to the to the rink and showed me around brand new Amsoil arena um and said yeah like we can't offer you any scholarship you have to redshirt a year and we can't guarantee you any playing time like the years after and I left I was like okay I'll think about it I called my mom right after and told her I was gonna do it like I, I wanted the opportunity and um yeah it was um ended up working out really well, but, um, definitely a long, interesting road to get there. Yeah. I mean, one of the best D1 programs in the country. I mean, they're a powerhouse now every year they're contending for national championships. I mean, yeah. um, pretty crazy to go from your hometown team and WHL kind of like overlooking you at a D3 to now you're end up at this powerhouse D1 program. I mean, yeah, that's a pretty crazy path. Yeah, it was interesting for sure. And, um, there was a guy, who was supposed to come in my, so my redshirt year is my freshman year. So my sophomore year would have been my first eligible year to play. There was a guy that was supposed to come in. It was supposed to be a big stud D man, but I think kind of a similar thing happened with the clearing house. And he ended up going the WHL route, which opened a roster spot for me. And um, yeah, it, it worked out well. I played almost every game, I think my sophomore year. Um, and then had an off summer a little bit, came in, uh, not in the best. I didn't test really well at all at camp and then was kind of in and out and got hurt early, uh, my junior year. And then after Christmas, I ended up getting my spot back, stayed in. And then my senior year, uh, I think played almost every game minus two for injuries. And then got to be paired with, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Neil Pionk. He was mm -hmm. my partner, my senior year. So, I always like to joke with Neil still to this day that I helped him get the, get his NHL contract, but he, uh, he likes to disagree with that. So <laughs> he was the name I was going to bring up next to you. Cause obviously I loved him. I was upset when the Rangers got rid of him. He was a guy that when he first came to the Rangers and you kind of like, you know, you just sit back and go, like, oh, like, who the hell is this? Like I, you never, he, you know, under at the free agent, like, okay, like, yeah. who's this guy? And I looked him up and I remember, I will remember watching the highlights cause you guys went to the national championship that year. Yeah. And I was like, I remember watching this guy during the national championship game. And I was like, wow, okay. Like, I think they have a player here. And sure enough, he comes in. I think he only played a little bit in Hartford. And then he came right up to the Rangers and he was yeah. an instant success. And obviously he's playing great in Winnipeg now. Um, but yeah, he's a guy that I was like, oh man, like, you know, when you get in on a guy early and you know, I liked him before everyone else liked him. Like he's yeah. the he's one of those guys that I'm like, I, I was on the Pionk train before anyone else was. For sure. He, uh, he he plays like he's six five. I mean, he's five <laughs> ten. He blocks shots. He move. He he does everything really well, and comes from a really great family. And I think he's got four other brothers who, like, I, I obviously became close with the family, just helping his dad in the summers for camps and um whatnot. And we actually had his brother. Um, so his is second youngest so right under neil nate we had him in south carolina last year playing for us so it was kind of cool in that regard um but yeah he's a he's a special player and a really great person 
yeah, you like the first guy, like, you know, in the locker room there in Duluth, like, Hey, you know, if you're looking for a landing spot, come to South Carolina, I'll take care of you. Yeah. It's a, it's a nice little, uh, you know, nice little place to go check out some good talented players. For sure. <laughs> uh, and I mean, yeah, while you're there, I mean, NHL talent, crazy NHL talent on that team. You know, when you were there, uh, Andy Walensky with the Rangers now yeah. uh, playing Hartford, he was there with you, Alex, I follow who I follow, who is a, one of the top, I think if the USA had a uh, you know Olympic team this year, he would have been a a guy who could have been fought you know been fighting for a spot there. He's playing great for the Kings. Uh, Su- uh, was it Source Susie is out Susie. there in Seattle. I mean, yeah, uh, a ton of guys. Joey Anderson up with the Leafs, another guy who I watched him the junior rinks and everything. So yeah, uh, just a ton of talent there. Yeah, it was uh, we had a really good team, and I think the national championship game um, between us and Denver, I think the amount of guys that actually played NHL games was insane. And then uh, we actually played North Dakota for the NCHC championship. And that was like a team that had Besser and Jost. Like it was, uh, there were some really good players that we had faced that year. And it was just us in Denver uh, one and two all year, like just changing um, back and forth, split the season series. Our kind of thing was we were always one of those teams that we found a way to come back. Like we would get behind and we would like the last couple minutes, um, kind of similar thing that happened in that game. Uh, got down and we were pressing there, but we just ran out of time. And actually, I signed a Jared Lukasavich who was on Denver and scored three goals against us. I signed him this summer for our team here. So I uh, had to bring it up, but I don't like bringing it up too much because they ended up beating <laughs> us. But He's asking why he's on the first power play when he gets in there. It's like, hey, yeah. uh <laughs> much, yeah. <laughs> Showing him a couple dollars off the top. Like, hey, you know, no, yeah. no. A little hard yeah. negotiation with him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that national championship game, that was at United Center too. How cool was yep. that experience? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, was able my mom was there, uh, which was really special for me. But yeah, we we had a big game against Harvard and then got into the game and like to skate out like obviously the kid right like it's all any kid that plays hockey wants to play in the nhl so like obviously at that point like had been to a couple development camps but that was really where it was like felt like you were playing in the nhl you come out and like warm-ups it's already crowded there's twenty two thousand people there like it was it was a really cool experience and do they do like the blackhawk style anthem where people uh scream along to it or no I don't remember honestly. I don't remember that. Uh so yeah, so from there, obviously, you know, you guys unfortunately lose the game, like you said, but uh you graduate from there and then you're an undrafted free agent. So walk me through that process. When did you start talking to teams and how that all play out for you? Yeah, um, I didn't really talk to too many. I had an agent uh at the time based out of Chicago, um, with Acme Sports. I think they're I forget what they switched their name to, but actually it's the same agent see his peonk has um he was just kind of telling me there was teams interested and you know i trusted him and just kind of let him um not pick but like kind of steer me in the right direction of where the depth was and all that stuff and it's just like i don't know you sign out of college right and like being an ahl contract i was like okay like i'm, I'm gonna be in the ahl like it's not you get to camp and then you realize like there's other guys from college, there's guys from junior hockey, there's guys from Europe, like all stuff that factored in. I think there was like 19, 20 D at camp. And I'm like trying to do all the math in my head. I'm like, Oh, like these guys will be here. I'll like Hartford and um, all that stuff. But um, yeah, so I ended up signing in Hartford and went to development camp and then was able to go to prospects camp in traverse city which was a really cool experience um again got to put the ranger jersey on which is obviously iconic and just a preseason like not even preseason game but like just to be able to do that and then went to main camp um got sent down to hartford i think i played a game or two exhibition wise and then got sent down to greenville south carolina and didn't really know much about the echl um but Ended up having a really good time there. I uh, had some good teammates. And then I think when Neil got called up, I went up for Neil. Like, so I got called up to Hartford. Um, I think it would have been a little sooner. I had a broken toe at the time. I blocked a shot in uh, 
I remember it was two games before Christmas in Atlanta and I, cause we're always in that rink now we play them all the time. So I can always remember the situation <laughs> and um, yeah, they called me up. I think it was right after Christmas, but I was had that broken toe still. So I think it was like a month or so after. And um, yeah, Neil's like, Hey, uh, just, like I got called off and I was like, Oh, awesome. And then my, my phone rings and it was Hartford calling me up. So again, it was, um, and then I got up to Hartford and it was just a cool experience. Like I was, you know, fortunate enough to looking back on it, I only played seven games, but I was fortunate enough to, to score a goal in the American hockey league. And, um, it was a really interesting one, obviously is from, yeah, let's talk about that goal real quick. <laughs> I still really don't know to this day how that went in. I think I, I forget who it was on. I think it was like, a. He was a, at the time he was a pretty big like prospect for boss or Buffalo and Rochester and got the puck off the draw and just skated it to the red line and tried to like go cross a cross corner dump and ended up like saucing it. And it just went over his, what I think it was his blocker side top shelf. And I just kind of like was standing there and everybody was like, we didn't really know what to do. And it was just like a, so it, it was a special moment. Obviously I have that plaque back home and in Canada. So. It's definitely yeah. one of the more unique first goals, I would say, from uh, from anybody. Yeah. yeah, I don't like how you guys. Listen, I took the shot on net because it did go top shelf. Like you know. Yeah, it I mean, looked like, it looked like you aimed right for it. Yeah, well, I would love to say that. I was I was always one of those guys that said uh, when I scored a goal like along the ice or something. Like, oh, I was trying to go top shelf, so I was pretty <laughs> honest with it. So. <laughs> uh, who signed with the Rangers first? Was it you or did Neil sign first? Which one did you guys signed first? Uh, I want to say it was Neil. Neil ah, signed. First. Yeah, I was gonna say they, they came out. Oh, you know, it's a two for one deal. They brought him along with you. you know? I know. I wish. I wish. But no, he he signed right after. Was there a part of you in training camp where you're counting guys up? You're like, oh, he's now my direct competition. Neil. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I to a certain degree, like, wasn't delusional by any means. Like, I knew Neil was a special player, and like, we weren't even in the same category. Like, it was just like for me to be paired with him in college, it was because I was the safety valve back there and let him like, and again, the the crazy thing is like, everybody thinks he was offensive, but like he was very good defensively. Um, but I was just paired with him, um, obviously to let him kind of use his offensive instincts in college and be back there. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, we were going against each other, but he was in a completely different class than I was. Uh, now what other rookie camps did you do before that? What development camps did you, what other teams? Um, after my red shirt year, I went to Chicago, uh, after my sophomore year, I went San Jose, didn't do anything junior year and then senior year Rangers. Um, now you get the training camp with the Rangers. He's obviously you said the Rick Nash, you know, introduced himself. Any, any other crazy stories in that training camp? Anything else? Like it was there a welcome to the NHL moment for you? No, I mean, I was just really trying to take it all in. Honestly, it was, um, it was really special to be able to do that and just kind of see like some of the guys like Kreider and Zabinajad. I think it was right after Zabinajad had signed his, his new deal and just like being in Madison Square Garden and like their practice facility, everything was top notch and just first class organization. Um, and, and like you said, that Traverse City, like so many guys I've had on the show playing Traverse City, like the first time they see their name, like on an NHL jersey. Yeah. How cool was that? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. I mean, I remember, I'll remember that for the rest of my life. Um, and the, the number they gave me at camp was 87, too. So, like, the guys that I was, the younger guys that were like there were always joking, like Crosby, and I, <laughs> I was, like the furthest thing from that. So, but like, yeah, I remember there's actually a picture. Neil's mom was at the game in Traverse City and we were like paired up together. So um, off the fa opening face off, you can see like me there with Neil. So it's kind of a cool moment for sure. That's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah. He said, hey, listen, that's a pretty good number to have. That's a, that's a goal scorers number for sure. <laughs> they knew it. They knew it from that, from then that you shoot in from the blue line in Hartford a couple of months yeah. later. <laughs> um, yeah. So that, in that year in Hartford, obviously, you know, you played the, the back end of that year, but, uh, from a defense, like, what was the biggest adjustment for you going from college to pro hockey? Speed was definitely an adjustment always for me, um, especially going to division three, division one, and then pro 
Um, but you get like your feet under you. Uh, I think it was just a skill set, like practicing with those guys. And even now, like coaching, I've been, been at some, like I've been at Washington's development camp and Hershey and just seeing like how skilled those guys are. It's really, you can't even like, you see everything on the highlights, right? Like about the plays that some of these guys make, but when you're there and like watching them every day, it's just a whole nother, like the skill set's the biggest thing for me. Who is, uh, was there a guy that stands out to you from like, I think you were in Detroit camp too, right? The training camp with them as yeah, well. Yeah. 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 Is there like a guy that like either Rangers or anywhere you played? Like, is there a guy who stands out to you like like an oh wow guy? Like that guy's unreal. No, I honestly there wasn't like <laughs> one, one that I was just like mesmerized by. No, uh, no, they were all <laughs> they're all good. <laughs> they're all they were all good. Um, I, I, again, I think it was more of me just being like I'm happy to be there kind of thing and <laughs> just taking it in. Were you ever out there with Lundqvist during your sessions at all or no? I, uh, I don't think I was. No, no, he didn't yell at you in Swedish or anything to get out of the way. He's big on no. yelling at the big defenseman to get out of the way, so he doesn't get a screen or anything. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't against him. <laughs> uh, yeah, in Detroit, any, anything stick out from the Detroit camp? Obviously, that's a, another storied franchise. Pretty two, yeah, two original six teams there. Yeah, that was a cool moment. Um, I actually, I thought I completely forgot about Detroit. Honestly, um, <laughs> not like in a way. I just um. But yeah, so they did their camp in Traverse, which was cool. And then we went back to their brand new rink and we were able to do like practices and whatnot. The facility there is great. Um, but I actually dressed uh, for warm ups for one of the exhibition games. And it was against like, I think it was Chicago. And I think Patty Kane and uh, Jonathan Taze were playing in that game. So they were on the other side for warm ups. So that was, yeah, I mean, I, can't believe I forgot that, but that was a special moment too. And again, it's is what it is. It might seem crazy to some people. That's one of my favorite moments. But at the end of the day, like I was just proud of myself for getting to where I was, and especially from where I came from. So definitely an honor for me for sure. How was that like the best one of your life? Are you trying to just rip clappers the entire time, go top shelf on the goalies warming up, trying to show show making, some skill off? <laughs> yeah, I was just making sure I wasn't uh falling over on my turns or anything like that, but uh so you made the transition out of coaching the coaching side now what led to that decision to hang up the uh the player side of it and start coaching yeah so I'd always been kind of interested in it and then uh wasn't really sure what I wanted to do like I was interested in like medical sales maybe or firefighting uh, I knew coaching I thought like again I you talk to people who try to get into coaching now and like even some big names, like it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Like I kind of just thought I'd be able to jump out and jump into coaching. Um, ended up like interviewing for a USHL job. Uh, I think I was the runner up as the assistant be lost to uh, a former guy who actually is at UMD right now. Um, Chup. Uh, he was, I think he was in tri city and then he ended up going to Muskegon for a year or two um but then i got a job in the na with Stu bickle um former guest great guy awesome guy um couldn't get a visa so then i go to my old school saint scholastica and their coach they got a new coach so i interviewed with the new coach he wanted to hire me again same thing couldn't get a visa so now that I've been in the U S for 10 years, like I want to be a U.S. citizen and every immigration lawyer that I talked to said it was best to like stay in good graces with the U S. So I went back to Canada uh, at the end of August was sitting at home and like contemplating what to do. Like Toledo said they were going to pass on me because I wasn't like, I didn't really keep them in the loop in the summer. So they signed other guys and Europe really wasn't happening because it was still COVID so I'm just sitting at home, like I'm still working out and just kind of thinking what's going on next. So a guy that I work hockey camps with, uh, his name's Brett Olson. He's the assistant in Waterloo now uh, in the USHL. And he and his wife, I think at the time, or fiance, weren't going to go back to Europe. So they were looking to stay in North America. And he was calling like some coast teams to kind of see where it would be the best fit and where he could get the most money, obviously being a veteran guy and good player, he'd be a really good player in this league. Um, he had called South Carolina and Ryan Blair, the head coach at the time, uh, said they hadn't had an assist or they don't have an assistant. 
So right after he got off the phone, he called me and I'm sitting in Canada, like sitting at home in Canada. I'm like, why, why is Oli calling me right now? Like it's not close to his summer camp or anything. And he calls and he's like, Hey, you still like looking for a job? I'm like, yeah, for sure. And he's like, well, I just talked to South Carolina. Here's the number. He said to give you, give him a call. I'm like, okay. So I gave him a call. We had a really good talk. Uh, and then the next day, the president, Rob Kincannon called me, um, just kind of asked me a few questions. It was kind of simple. And then the day after they had offered me the job and like, I did, really didn't know, again, didn't really know anything about Charleston. Didn't like look it up. Um, didn't ask how much I was getting paid. I was just one happy to be coaching and two, like just jump, like not jump right in, but like, obviously going from playing to coaching and pro. And then it was like, then I realized that I was like in Charleston, one of the best cities in the USA um the coaching tree that's been here like it's crazy uh, yeah like i've been fortunate enough to get to know um like it's up like even up here like warsawski jason fitzsimmons who's a scout with washington bednar carberry and then kale mclean who's with calgary now like and i've been able to be in contact with those guys and they've helped me so much like carberry has been unbelievable with me um any question i have like power play he's he's been my go-to guy for sure with it and like i got hired and the first question i asked her like are you aware that the last uh stingrays coach from saskatchewan uh just won a stanley cup like those are pretty big shoes to fill i'm like yeah i mean i I don't know if i'll ever fill those shoes but like it's just cool like knowing that he was from sask and kind of like he's got a bedsy has a very like great path too. started in the east coast won a championship went up to the ahl won a championship and then obviously last year winning a stanley cup like just the coaching tree and network that's here in the city and i mean i couldn't be happier to be in the role uh that i'm in right now and with with the people around me that are making the team uh have so so much success so yeah it's something about that role that you know that everyone who's come out of that job seems like they go up and do great things so yeah. Uh, obviously let's hope that continues there for you for sure that'd be awesome uh now you know you're only a couple of years in obviously into your coaching career now you're head coach and um have you like has there anything that you've taken from other coaches along the way that you incorporate into your game or into your coaching style or is it something that you've created on your own and you kind of do your own thing um a little bit of both honestly like i'll uh you know i'll always pick coaches brains on kind of what they do and um kind of things that have worked and haven't worked for them at the end of the day the message that i've mostly gotten from a lot of coaches you you have to be yourself you can't try and emulate somebody or something that you're not because the players are going to see right through that right away so i just try and um i pride myself on trying to be a good leader and um that just show up every day with the, the same work ethic and same energy and obviously put di- a little different spin on uh, other stuff and i think me kind of being fresh out of playing too. I empathize with the players a little bit in terms of like travel or off days or certain things like that. So it's been good. I, again, like my third year coach, but first years ahead, like I'm still, still learning on how I, how I am and what kind of coach I'm going to be. And that's kind of the good thing about coaching. It's like when I was playing for so long, I had always learned something new every day. Like with coaching, there's literally something that always comes up where it's like, Oh, like, that's something that I can maybe think about. So like there's, I'm always learning and um, yeah, it's been, it's been a wild ride for sure. Now, have you gotten up to the caps camp yet? Have you seen Ovi up close and personal or no? Uh, no, we, uh, we went to development camp and then we didn't end up going to uh, main camp. We just kind of thought it'd be a little too congested. We wouldn't be on the ice either. So we had some, especially with, with our job here, like we're the ones that, schedule our travel and do all that so we had to make sure that our training camp and everything was taken care of so hopefully one day i'll see him at camp they'll, they'll use you as like you know the the fake block on his slap shot or something in camp that'll be by uh... all means i would love to do that <laughs> be an honor. uh a couple questions before i let you go here what's your uh worst travel story worst travel story hmm So it was two years ago, my first year. So as the assistant, I was the one that handled all like booking hotels and um, all the travel. So we were coming 
in to uh, Wheeling, West Virginia. And we pull into, I forget the name of the hotel, but like we get in really late. Like we played the night before in uh, Indy. We get in late and like I was gassed. So I like just turned my phone on or I plugged my phone in and didn't have like the, um, the ringer on. And I wake up to like, I think it was like six missed calls and 20 text messages from the guys. And I've come to find out in the morning that like some of the rooms, there's people in them. Some of the rooms had bed bugs. Some of the rooms um, was only a single bed. Like there was just like an endless list of stuff. And I was like, I was just thrown like blown away, obviously. And then uh, we I think we were there for three. So we played Friday night. Uh, we won that first night. So then Saturday, after the first period, there's like a like a hole in the ice. Like at the end of the one one side, the ref had noticed it, kept delaying, kept delaying. They're like, okay, I think it was like an hour and a half, and they finally called it. They're like, all right, like we'll work on it all through the night. We'll play the game tomorrow, and then it will just push your other game to Monday. We're like, okay. So we get go home or like go to the hotel, get back Sunday. Now it is three minutes into the game. The complete opposite side, opposite corner is like down to the cement. Like it just instantly down to the cement. So we're like the guy from the ECHL is there. He's like, you can't play on this. And we're like, we're like we need to get back home because we had like, I think we had three, three or four big games coming up to like, we were in a fight for playoffs. And it was percentage, so it wasn't like, obviously it would have been nice. I think we would have got all, would have been six points, but like, it was just a crazy trip. And like, I don't think we'll ever go to Wheeling, West Virginia again. That's on the, the no-fly zone. Yeah, 100%. And we'll let the president know we're not we're not doing that again. So. <laughs> didn't check the uh, the Expedia reviews before you got there on the hotel? No, didn't. Not at all. I think it was one of the only one uh one of their only hotels in wheeling so <laughs> not going there again have no. that be known carolina yeah, not exactly. not traveling <laughs> West Virginia ever again <laughs> yeah oh man well Dave, good luck this season thanks so much for joining us and uh I th- well, you guys are point back in first place now so it's gonna be a battle there and jacksonville's right there too so i just yeah. had on uh nick luco a couple weeks ago and he's all right you know, he uh he thinks that they have a really good chance to win it all this year. So uh should be a good battle between you two. Uh yeah. young guys, young guys coming up in the profession. Get you on before your guys become famous in the NHL when you're Stanley Cup, just like uh Bednar there. Yeah. No, I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brendan, for joining us. I know he's a super busy guy. Listen, you're a head, head coach of a hockey team. You got a thousand things going on, so I cannot Thank you enough for joining us. It's an incredible story, his journey. And listen, that South Carolina hot coach, there's been some big names that have come through there that have done some great work, you know, winning AHL championships. And how about Jared Bednar just won an AHL championship? He was head coach there too. So uh, great lineage of coaching coming out of there. And hopefully Brennan's the next guy to get that, you know, go through there, get to the American Hockey League, win there, and become an AHL head coach eventually. And uh, they're on a great run this year. They're actually battling it out with our guys down there in Jacksonville for first place right now. So want to wish them all the best. Maybe not against our guys in Jacksonville. I want to see some of our uh, guys down there win, but uh, it should be a fun uh, a fun battle between those two then in the same division uh, down there to try to win that Kelly Cup. And uh, I can't thank him enough for coming on the show. And that does it for episode 120 of the Broadway Hat Podcast. 120, nice round number. I like that. Uh, thank you to everyone who's obviously left us a review and subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts. If you have not, please go search us on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review. Every five-star review we do receive, a dollar is donated to Alex's Lemonade Foundation. Uh, we're closing in on uh, 200 five-star reviews, so please go on there. Leave a review, help an amazing cause fight Peter Cancer. Subscribe to the show and check that out today. Make sure you can go and find the show on Spotify as well and leave us a five-star review and follow the show as well. You can find the show on Google Play, uh, Pandora, Amazon Music, uh, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, anywhere you get your podcast, you can find us there. Make sure you go and follow the show on social media on Instagram and Facebook at the Broadway Hat Podcast. Make sure you find the show on Twitter at the Broadway Hat Pod. Uh, you can find my personal Twitter account at KHOLNY for all New York Ranger updates. 
Also, make sure you go and follow the show on YouTube at the Broadway Hat Podcast. Uh, we post all full-length episodes there, clips from the show, uh, highlights of the guys we've had on the show. So uh, make sure you go check some exclusive content there as well. So make sure you go check out our YouTube page, subscribe on there as well. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next week. 